Right. Uh, Assalamualaikum and a very good afternoon. Uh, welcome to everyone. Uh, Dr. Rahmat has shared uh, uh, the link to the attendance form for today. So before you start, if everybody uh, present could uh, log in your particulars to the forms, that is much appreciated. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum. Selamat tengah hari. Uh, do we have uh, participants from USU? From Universitas Sumatera Utara here? Uh, a lot of them are still trying to log in, Prof. Dia tengah mencuba. Oh, okay. We can allow up to 300, kan? For this Zoom? Six, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, okay. So I try contact the presenter ni dia dah blue tick tapi dia tak jawab. <laughs> I see a few names from Usu already logged in but I cannot find the presenter. Sekejap lah. Uh -huh.
Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Sorry, Dr. Suhanizam. Miscommunication miss with Miss Etty. Okay. So, Dr. Eka dah masuk dah, ya? Ya. Yeah. Okay, great, great. In that case, saya rasa kita boleh start lah. Alright. Okay. Okay, Assalamualaikum. Very good afternoon. Uh, welcome to everybody to our uh, to the Department of Community Health uh, CME session. Uh, today we are very honored to have our colleagues from Universitas Sumatera Utara who will also be participating uh, in today's uh, CME session. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, for agreeing to be part of this program today and hopefully uh, this will open up uh, the avenue for future collaborations uh, between our institutions. Okay, uh, so let me start. Saya mula dengan menjual tiga rangkap pantun. Okay. Um, hari Sabtu ke Bukit Tinggi sehingga Sabanta di Kota Baso. Ibu dan Pak Dosen dan Ambo Ormati, Salamek Siang, Jo Salamek Basuo. Uh, batang durian banyak binalu, buah dan masak jatuh dahulu. Acara seminar dan ditunggu-tunggu, ikolah masanya mencaliaan ilmu. Dan last sekali, kucing mengajar beruang angso, angso tabang ke kucing menyambar. Untuk Pak Dosen Jokawan lainnya, izinkan Ambo membuka acara. Okay, so today we are very uh, fortunate to have our colleagues from USU and also from uh, our side in the Community Health Department. Uh, we'll be sharing about uh, a topic that is closely related to the pandemic that we are having today uh, of COVID-19. So we have uh, a speaker from uh, University Sumatera Utara, Dr. Eka Lastari Mahyuni, and also one of our DRPH candidates, Dr. Jacinta Mary, who will be talking about, uh, number one, community engagement in the prevention of COVID-19 infection in Sumatera. And after that, uh, Dr. Jacinta will be talking about the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on mental health in Malaysia. So we'll start with Dr. Ika. Um, uh, Dr. Ika, Dr. Ika Lestari Mahyuni, she is a lecturer in the Faculty of Public Health, Universitas Sumatera Utara, um, and she started teaching there since 2005 until today. Um, she teaches subjects about ergonomics, worker nutrition, uh, agriculture, health work, industrial psychology, hospital occupational safety and health, the impact of work environment such as pesticides use, physical hazard and chemistry hazard. And her areas of interest in research include uh, uh, welding worker, pesticide use, hospital acquired infections, and all about design and micro ergonomics. Okay, with uh, concentration related to occupational safety and health, ergonomics and pesticide toxicity. Um, so today, Dr. Ika will be talking about uh, community engagement in the prevention of COVID-19 infection in Sumatra. Uh, as we all know, if we empower the community, they would have a greater awareness on what are the things that they need to do to prevent the spread of COVID-19 uh, amongst the community members. So, it is uh, good that we can share uh, the, the, the measures and the initiatives that has been done in Sumatra um, towards this aim. So Dr. Ika, whenever you're ready, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you Dr. Suhai Nizam. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I'll be grateful to come here to talk with you and share about community engagement, of course. Uh, saya hormati ya. Ketua Jabatan daripada uh, community ini, uh, Bapak, apa, Ketua Jabatan Profesor Madia Dr. Rosliza. 
dan manaf dan juga pensyarah-syarah jabatan dan pelajar-pelajar di jabatan community medicine ini. Okay, uh, let me give me the time to share my screen. Okay, you can see my screen. Yeah, boleh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we start about uh, today is uh, talking about community engagement and the prevention of COVID nineteen. Yeah. And in, in, in this session, I will talk about three parts. And the first is about COVID-19 trend condition, community engagement, and community engagement determinant. And it is about uh, community engagement. And we know today we talk, uh, make it in relation with the pandemic COVID-19 trend condition. And the first, I want you to know about the condition in Indonesia is different in here. And the difference is from one year that we have passed the COVID-19, we have the different name SARS of uh, variant from COVID-19 that we WHO divided into from uh, 2000 and 2000, yeah. The, whereas the alpha, beta, gamma, and delta are the WHO variants of concern. All of, of these variants were first detected in countries that have weak control over the spread of COVID-19, like Indonesia, or maybe namely in UK, South Africa, Brazil, and India. The variant that dominates positive cases in Indonesia is Delta variant, yeah, where the tech was found in Jakarta and Palembang. Its nature is easily contagious and make it quickly spread to 16 provinces, thus overwhelming the health system in Indonesia. The spreading is getting out of control. So the potential to, for mutation will eventually give the new variants that are detrimental to society. Until in December 2020, a new variant Lambda had been found in Peru. The spread of this virus, of course, it will bring the mutation that is known by conducting genome sequencing with an increase in test sample from uh, 200,000 to 400,000 sample per day and the government has established 12 laboratories under the auspicious of this research. Uh, and then the rules has regarding testing in Indonesia. Uh, uh, actually it's adequate, but their implementation, implementation is not optimal. The number of the testing is limited in here. Tracing still weak and quarantine is still weak. So there is always a gap between the rules and implementation. So I think to prevent the creation of new variants of uh, virus, potentially it's more virulent variants. It, it's spread in the community by restricting movement and comply with all health protocol. In addition, self isolation is not only carried out by residents, who come from abroad or infected with COVID. Uh, then I know you all have known about the typical progression of COVID-19 because this is about the how the spreading and progression COVID in the body. And you are the medicine, of course, uh, very, very, very known about and experienced about this. And the spreading and progression in here make the the data or the number of cases and COVID in the world is increasing in significant. Confirmed today from August 2021, there is confirmed cases in 203 trillion with that in 4 billion. So my, our uh, death rate is 2.1%. And in Asia Tenggara, we have found that in 39, yeah, 39 and 489 billion and, we, and that in for five, sorry, 599 billion. So the, the, rate, the death rate is in one and 5%. It means the global risk is very high 
with 204 infected country and 151 local transmission country. So it means COVID is not a joke. Yeah. So we have to care how to prevent the COVID-19 in our country. And this is the data where we can see from WHO region until August 2021 that America still has the height, uh, the height, the height number that confirmed of COVID. And in Indonesia, you can see the data in here. There is from May until June, July is very increasing, increasing the uh, cases of COVID-19 and hospitals are being overwhelmed by a surge in COVID-19 case and a depletion of oxygen supplies. So the number of funeral with the COVID protocol increased in 10 times in the May and July period. This condition going to be very well because many people die while undergoing self-isolation at home. Most are looking for health facility and waiting in line to get emergency care in the last one month. So the waiting time is make some, some people in here going to die. And this is a tip of the iceberg and must be anticipated by strengthening health facility and health human resource, of course. So there must also be strict and on mobility to prevent the increase on, uh, in the rate of cases at risk of death. Uh, many hospitals are forced to send patients home because they cannot provide the oxygen. So we are eliminating uh, very less of oxygen. So iso isolation, self-isolation appeal to increasing, encouraged by directing the public to buy such equipment or recognize the symptom at the first aid. Uh, in here, because the increasing is very significant, so the bed occupation rate for isolation room and critical patient always reached 100%. And some hospitals set up emergency tents to treat patients who are still quieting up. In fact, many doctors are in self-insulation, unable to practice, and even die due to exposure to COVID. So in here, you can see the province that's very high in Sumatra is at the first, and in Sumatra, Selatan, and Aceh. Although in, here, in this session, I will uh, giving the information especially for Sumatra Utara later. Yeah. And, and we know at 13 July, July 2021, Indonesia getting the number one in the world with the dead case. So it is very ironic and very, uh, very need to care, very need to prevent and do something action if uh, to to decrease the, the COVID-19 cases number. So how, what is the solution maybe in here? We, uh, back to the topic, we talk about the community engagement, of course, about the prevention of COVID-19 in Sumatra. Based on the data, the community in Sumatra is very unique. If you know, Sumatra is one island in here and so many so many provinces in here. Sumatra Island is the island consists in 10 provinces, 34 cities and 110 regencies. However, for our study this time, we will focus more on condition of the community in preventing COVID infection in North Sumatra, especially in Medan City. Uh, if you know about the North Sumatra, it is located in here, yeah with Danau Toba is the, is the famous place in here. And North Sumatra is uh, at the cross of position of West Pacific Trench. Yeah, of West Pacific Trench. Uh, and then, sorry. North Sumatra is rich with a natural resource and the first cultures of its people in here. So many peoples in here from Nias and then Sibolga and then Karonis, Batanis and others, Malay, of course, this is Malay and Minang. Yeah, the Dr. Suhainizam is make a pantun like a Minang people. Yeah, difference in social, economic and political identity are inherent characteristic of the people in North Sumatra. Now, 
Uh, how about the COVID in North Sumatra? The case in COVID in Sumatra is uh, has a significant progress step where we found at 14 July 2021, we have 800, more than 800 cases and it's increased by a week in 77.4%. And we get the higher's in 28 July 2021 with the case and increase again in a week, just in a week, we have get the cases in 2036. And we can see the population in here because uh, the increase of the COVID uh, cases in here because the low awareness of the community in com uh, comply with health protocol triggers and increase in cases. It's ironic because there are still many people who celebrate weddings, maybe gatherings, recitation, and uh, come to be the takziah, yeah, mungkin we can say like that. Uh, increased number of uh, in Medan or in Sumatra makes the governor more seriously and concerned to prevent this uh, with tightening of treaty, yeah, require health protocol and Im impose restriction by implementing PPKM. PPKM, we cannot uh, do like uh, another country like lockdown because uh, something so many variable that we have can talk in here, but we can uh, make the restriction with PPKM. Okay, now we talk about the community engagement. What is the community engagement? Community engagement is same like the community or social or civil participation. So it this. Yeah, so in here, the key word is about the participation, of course, about the community participation. It is a process which individuals take part in decision making in the institution or in some programs or environment that affect them. An inactive voluntary involvement of individuals and groups is changing problematic condition in communities and influencing the policies and programs that affect the quality of their life and their life of other residents. This is about the community engagement and the participation in here. To reach the effective community engagement, of course, we have to do something and have the same vision in here. So to build the engagement in here, we have to listen another or uh, understanding to each other so we get the good communication to reach our purpose or our objective uh, to solve some like the prevention in infection of COVID-19. So when we talk or when we join with another people or we're together with our worker or anything, we will find about the wants, about the needs of somebody and how they are make a decision. And three part of this will bring the participation of community to engage and then uh, it means the some community in here will be to be an agent, yeah, an agent into or to solve some uh, anything about how to prevent the COVID nineteen infection. That is about the uh, community engagement, and in Sumatra, of course, in Medan, yeah, we have so many found the participation or community engagement that have doing by the people in Sumatra, like, uh, and we can divide it into five. And the first is about self-medication. So the people in Sumatra always uh, are very clever, I think, make uh, some, some uh, herbal medicine. So they always drink the herb or maybe drink the milk, like soya milk, or, or eat the herbal supplement and infuse water and etc. It is uh, just for bring and build their self-medication to protect and to increase their immunization, yeah, immune and um, body immunization, sorry, body immunology, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry. And the second one is about self-prevention. Yeah, community in Sumatra uh, uh, also make something activity to prevent they are from COVID spreading or COVID ex exposure, like doing vitamin consumption or maybe sunbed and stay at home, get isolation uh, to, to reduce the exposure from the environment. 
and then provide COVID prevention and tools equipment uh, to maybe there is a to be the early where they are uh, find the little symptom of COVID and body protect exercise like going to bike yeah and uh, doing their personal hygiene in daily it's about their self prevention and the action that uh, engage in people of Sumatra is they are make the some self regulation in here they are uh, on the with their own they uh, doing their health protocol in in the best and then going uh, join with vaccination or maybe uh, with uh, follow the government doing the PPKM and then doing rapid test web and or screening they are they are, apa ya? They are, they are uh, rapid test and swab to know uh, early diagnosis about their self, their health, and uh, always increase in treaty in treaty program is about the how about the testing, tracing, and treatment in Sumatra is always doing. Always, uh, although it is still weak, but it's always doing in continuously. And uh, a special thing in Sumatra is uh, bring. Uh, it uh, brings very uh, the solid solidarity of the people, yeah, of Sumatra. So we can say it's uh, the part of the social caring. They are care about the COVID patient. So they are build the COVID care post, or maybe uh, they are doing food donation and social assistance for the COVID exposure or COVID patient in here. So there is the solidarity is. Uh, solidarity in here uh, seem very stronger and along of the with the implementation of restriction on the community activities to stem the behavior of corona infection many people also lost the opportunity to make a living initiative to donate is getting stronger uh, starting from raising donation to buy vitamin and supplement for health workers making private home a place of self-isolation for positive patient without symptom and providing free food for those who are forced or work outside at home. Like here, in the weekend, it is a hub, uh, a hub worker, and then in, the, yeah, mungkin in Indonesia, call it Tukang Beca. Yeah? It is a transport station that always going uh, out of home, work outside, and need and very possible that going the COVID exposure. And the last of engagement in Sumatra is doing by uh, health promotion. We are, we are make uh, some banner or maybe some media that promotion about the code, the, about the COVID health advice and giving the education for the family or the community at any time. Yeah, it's, we call it like the COVID education and make uh, some area, yeah, like special area like masjid, we can promote our, how to use the mask, and then the complex, yeah, a home complex, resident complex, always uh, giving the some message that how to prevent and promote about the COVID-19 program prevention, prevention, sorry. So uh, when we talk about the COVID, so many in here, I will tell you about some survey, the impact of social democratic COVID-19 in Sumatra. Uh, about the, uh, the case of social distancing, we have found where is the people have the knowledge of social distancing policy in good. Yeah, 18 and 18.7%, 18, but that uh, social distancing is implemented just into 72%. Uh, and because the pandemic of COVID, the transportation usage is uh, decreased because uh, some people so always avoiding the use of the public presentation, transportation and online transportation. Yeah. And the impact that very feeling by the people is about the work termination, where uh, because the pandemic, some companies are closed during pandemic and 2.52% workers are laid off. In other hand, more manufacturer or uh, first service company get the work from home policy in early, uh, the manufacturer in 39, 
percent and uh, in the service company is 42.36 percent and some companies and service company doing the work from home and work on office where is the manufacturer just 34.76 percent and the service company in 41.75 percent but uh, we still found there there are some people in his style still just work in their office and it is just uh, getting rich in 7.07 percent and uh, 46.4 percent the people in Sumatra impossible doing the work from home so they are still potential the exposure by the COVID-19 and from the environmental or maybe nearby uh, nearby with their worker basis and the the high impact because the COVID-19 uh, it's about the economic income, of course. Uh, the people with low income, people is getting decreasing of their uh, increasing of their in, income in seventy point fifty three percent, and the transportation or warehouse in here uh, get a low income also in ten sixty two point sixty percent. Accommodation and food and drink business in in seventeen six and eight four percent. And beside this, the expenditure increase in 56%. It's very, very terrible, very makes some people in here lose about their, their power to live and, and just confuse how to do to, so, to solve uh, their problem in their house or their family. And the data said, from the survey always about the, the frequently of people wash their hand is more doing by women yeah in 84 uh, percent than the, uh, the man yeah 75 percent so it is a good about a good awareness about how always to wash their hand and then of course to, uh, also to how to using the mask if they are uh, going to outside and choose the effective choosing to stay at home for self isolation uh, to re to reduce and uh, to uh, to reduce the exposure of covid-19 this is uh, some survey that uh, we have known about the sumatra and then Community's concern in here bring the people in sumatra going to the mental health also yeah, and this is the data you can see where they are in 50 till 80 uh, have the worried about the COVID-19 spreading or, or, or exposure that comes from media announcements. So in here, the people give get the information about the COVID and they are very worried about the effect, but they are confused how to do the prevention in, by themselves. And then uh, about their self-health and family health. So it is make some worries from the individual or family, how to protect themselves and uh, to reduce the exposure from COVID. And then uh, the worries when go outside, this is the feeling that the uh, communities uh, feel in Sumatra and in bring to make somebody using the mask and you know in the period of june 2021 there has been a pandemic fatigue in here so the endless pandemic has left most people ex house so much that they don't care about the risk and consequence of their action society in here has reached herd stupidity not leading to herd immunity and the spike in COVID cases does not only occur due to the character of the virus but also about the human behavior in here uh, for example, the behavior is come from official who underestimate the pandemic and people who ignore the, pro, the health protocol. Even today, there are still many people who question whether from COVID-19 really exists or is it just information on television? There is a question that always uh, uh, pass at their brain. And at the first, people who obey the, uh, the health protocol were loud and ridiculed by they were uh, using the mask. 
over time because of the frequent sound of ambulance sirens near their home, and people began to comply with wearing masks. However, there are still many who deny that argument and social media and sarcasm are uh, unavoidable and the pandemic that has been going on for more than 18 months yeah, it has exhausted the people. This triggers, this triggers uh, people to be resigned and indifferent to the process. Based on the research, uh, the COVID-19 task force in September until December 2020, the percentage of people complains with wearing masks fell just in 28%. The infection, of course, in here, this pandemic fatigue occurs as a response arising from a prolonged public health crisis. And the severity of the scale of the COVID-19 pandemic has made all government around the world call for the implementation in passive level. Besides that, there are other factors that make some, uh, someone ignore about the process and the opportunity to make a living other than having to go outside, have a greater chance of getting tired quickly and experiencing symptoms of pandemic practice. Not only public health workers are also tired in here, yeah. Maybe because they are very tired to uh, to save some patient of COVID, but sometimes the emotion and death of health worker also escalate. This obedience to the health protocol has overwhelmed the health workers in dealing with the shortage in patient. And contrast with the community are not avoided such as feeling that only patient must be served but do not care about the hard worker. There are still families or patients who think that a patient is deliberately said to be COVID or in other hand, officers are tired or fighting to save a patient life and anything. Uh, so the pandemic uh, fatigue is found also in Sumatra Medan. But uh, about the vaccination in here, uh, at the first, the people in Sumatra very scared how to be, uh, how, uh, where they are uh, asking to be getting the vaccination. But and now people not want vaccine because uh, of need. There are rules that require showing a vaccine certificate when using the traveling or working. So the, this uh, coercive thing is quite effective in getting rid of worries and for the sake of the continuity of work and needs on daily life. Uh, there is a talk about how the engagement in Sumatra. So, and from that, from that explanation, we, we can conclude some determinant that uh, influence the community engagement in here. In fact, from all of this explanation, it's also necessary to pay attention to several factors that greatly affect the success of community participation in undergoing uh, into intervention program. And uh, from the meta-analysis that we found, there is six, six uh, dominant, six major variable that, that influence the, the, the community engagement at the first is about the sense of community. What is the sense of community? Sense of community is a plays a role in promoting social action and citizen commitment. It is defined as a catalyst for participation and community development. Associated with the variety of community engagement behavior. So in here, the sense of community is the first time as a catalyst that we have found and we can move them to build the community engagement. And the second one is about the community identity. Yeah, Identity in here implies in, uh, about the psychological orientation to one's community that's more simple and individualistic. So in here, sense of the personal involvement. Uh, and it is correlated with the perceived community engagement in here. Perceived community engagement in here is very, you know, very comprehensive. So we have to define the perceived and bring them to be a good understanding about the 
COVID prevention, of course. And the third part or variable that uh, influence the community engagement is about the social well-being. The opportunity, the opportunity for participation and self-determination and possibility of contributing to community life are fundamental for increasing psychological and social well-being and sense of belonging. So the social well-being, it's a relationship between participation and sense of the community, like life satisfaction, loneliness, or others that, that always to be our basing based to the needs and wants of the people and how they are to be belonging and going to life in any time and in long time. And the fourth variables that... Uh, influence the community engagement is about the place identity. It is uh, some, some important also uh, because Sumatra has a very variance of character. And when we talk about the place identity is strong relationship between seniors and their neighborhoods as a source of social identity. So that is a part of our identity is given because being a citizen of my city, this is my country, this is my city, it will motivate the community to actively take care of their, uh, their health, of course, their health or their community, their community health. Yeah. And then the last but not least, that is uh, the variable that important to understanding how to build the community engagement is about the trust. Of course, about the trust in the community and the trust in institution. And here, the citizen participation can only be developed based on mutual trust and between people and institution. And then community engagement in here, uh, about trust in the community and trust in institution, in have a relation even though of um, controversial, but in community engagement could develop the opposite reason. So people engage because they do not longer trust their institution, perhaps using form or of protest and anti-established participation. So uh, if we talk about this variable or this determinant, it is impossible to discuss participation or engagement without including the construct of empowerment, an active process where individuals, organizations, and communities can act to save the environments they inhabit, to gain control of their life, and to work for social justice. So, uh, six of the minor variable is very, and, and we can found because this is always happen in when we are get, get the community empowerment or community engagement. And uh, of course, the first, uh, the first variable that we have concern in here is about how is the sense of community. So anything intervention we have to do, if the sense of community is low, so yeah, we just uh, going uh, find like just a poor management to solve the COVID-19 uh, problem and, and we have to change anything to how to define and found the answer or the solution and action, the strategy to bring the community come and think about how to prevent the COVID-19 in good or in well. Uh, I think that is uh, my talks today and I give it back to Mr. Dr. Swasnija. Thank you for your attention in here. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikum salam. Thank you, Dr. Ika, for a very interesting um, talk. I think uh, a similar situation uh, is being faced here in Malaysia as well and in many other countries around the world who are uh, battling uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. Okay, so I think we have time for a few questions. If any of the members who are here today would like to uh, ask Dr. Ika any question. Salam, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, please, please introduce yourself, where you're from, and the okay. question, please. Uh, thank you. Makasih, uh, Dr. Ika. Nama saya Khair Hafiz. Khair Hafiz dari UPM. Uh, 
teman saya bilang eh yuk ngomong aja was ini saya kemarin saya tuh kuliah di ya, di Umpat Bandung uh, angkatan 2006 but anyway is interesting uh, interesting uh, lecture deh uh, uh, regarding social engagement in um, uh, in Sumatera Utara but uh, i have uh, several uh, curiosity to ask first of all uh, regarding self prevention and also self medication so uh, i can see that uh, they are actually have some self medication uh, taking vitamins uh, milk and some other things and also self uh, prevention which is some bathing so my my question is uh, how much uh, the government of indonesia emphasize on on this uh, on the evidence base of the uh, prevention and treatment because uh, in malaysia when we talk about evidence base when they are self treated themselves uh, 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 and uh, because of that uh, we can see that uh, people coming to the hospital late uh, and because of that they are already in category 4 or 5 and we are actually late in treating the patient so self treating without evidence base for us is not really encouraging in malaysia but i can see here uh, people are actually being uh, uh, accepted uh, when they are actually self treating and self prevention using that method. The second one is uh, regarding this online transportation. I'm not quite um, uh, clear what is the meaning of the online uh, 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 online transportation have, that have been mentioned before. Thank you. Ah, okay. Uh, okay, directly, Mr. Suhaini Zah. Yes, yeah. please go ahead, yeah. Okay, thank you, Ms. Hairil. Hairil, yeah. <laughs> Uh, for the question about the self medication yeah in indonesia i uh, maybe i can say in 70 until 90% knowing about the herbal medication or self medication because we are uh, we are known from our parents or maybe from our grandfather or grandmother yeah and uh, they are always uh, educate always Uh, using some herbal medicine and it is like um apa nak bahasa indonesia warisan ya yeah. warisan ya yeah. budaya culture culture in people in indonesia uh, making the self medication is uh, about the traditional medicine is a part of the people or community in indonesia they are have the belief in here in there their belief uh, that the herbal or self medication is yeah maybe in medical it's not 100% as a treatment but it is may, uh, can reduce some symptom or some uh, some symptom or maybe some diagnosis uh, or maybe some feeling sickness or a complaint in their body and uh, the and we know all the vitamin or maybe the medicine is uh, also produced by using the resource yeah about using the natural resource like like the herbal resource like uh, like some leaf or maybe some some pepper or maybe uh, the garlic or maybe Uh, tomatoes yeah anything just just produced by themselves and make some what we said it some some mixing of herbal that they believe it will bring the it will protect themselves and make it more clearly yeah so we can and, and it, it happened because they are also afraid to be going to the hospital they are afraid of going to the doctor they are afraid about uh, why i didn't want to injection in here because uh, in people mindset the uh, injection is uh, identic the hospital treatment in here so they, they choose how to use or eat or drink the herbal medication uh, to to get their self medication in here in bandung Uh, maybe uh, if you have found it in Unpad, Java, Javanese is the member or the people that uh, have the culture uh, always uh, drink the herb, yeah, because it they are believe uh, it is uh, like like uh, usually it is like a tea maybe or like a coffee, but they are have the component that can. 
uh, increase their immunity in here. And about the transportation in here, but no transportation. Sorry, well, what your question? Maybe you can we can explain it more. Your question about transportation. I, I, I just wanted to know the the term, uh, the use of term of online transportation. What is that? Is it great? Oh, see, the online transportation. Uh, in Indonesia, we have online transportation from our ministry. We call that Gojek. Yeah. Gojek and Grab, maybe in Malaysia there is oh, okay. Grab. Grab is like online transportation. Oh, okay, okay. Thank there you. it is. Yeah. Okay, Miss Hairil. Thank yeah, you yeah, for thank your question. All right. Thank you, Dr. Ika, for the explanation. I think uh, it's very relevant. Okay, uh, we have one question uh, on the chat box. Uh, it is a two-part question. Uh, if Dr. Ika can respond to this. Uh, number one, uh, how to get uh, the interest of the community to participate in uh, community engagement? And the second one is how to ensure that when you have the community engagement, it is sustained? Okay, thank you very much for Ms. Norliza. <laughs> it is a good question, yeah? Uh, how to get their interest part to participate. Of course, this is the question for all community engagement or all community empowerment. Uh, back to our determinant, Ms. Norliza. How to get their interest, we are, so we have get a click, get a click and found the sense of community. That is the catalyst of this empowerment on this engagement because uh, that is a catalyst and when we have uh, joined to the community and found their sense to and get and educate them, educate them or make us some vision, the same vision and mission. Yeah. So the people uh, in Indonesia believe and trust and want to try, want to try to, to join in our intervention, of course. So the sense of community is the point important in here. And how to get there? Well, also, uh, of course, we have to uh, giving some approach and getting the the best communication and uh, bring some uh, relationship, a good relationship with the community. That is the first step, the first step to get their interest. And also, of course, we talk about our intervention in here. So it we have to. Uh, the intervention have to we have said to them and communicate with them in interest interest what is the interest experience or maybe like a simple yeah just a simple it has to simple communication and information that giving to the community because you know there is the different and variant of education of the people so we cannot uh, doing some uh maybe like in our school yeah like like a uh, theoretical communication is not is not better doing in here but we have found the key of my, our theory and giving to them educated to them so they are understand about our our opinion or our intervention so they are will be interested so we have to find the sense of the community in here it, it is the first yeah, also how to ensure there to, uh, to be sustained, it is maybe just in, just build the capacity building or the person building in here. We have to always in elaborate, always communication, always uh, get the collaboration in some activity and don't leave them. Yeah, sometimes when we have the intervention, after we doing our intervention, so we are gone. That is the community make they are not believe again with us, not trust with us. So just it is just just your need. You not talk about me. You just 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 say in your mouth. Uh, that is uh, you have to avoid that. So we have always keep communicate, keep contact. Yeah, keep contact with them and always uh, uh, giving at all build build their their sense. Always uh, has a good relation then. Don't leave them. That is that is the key point. Don't leave them after you have passed your intervention because the intervention will be sustained if you always continuously with them. Also, thank you. 
Yeah, nice question, Mister. Thank you, Dr. Ika. There's another question on the chat box. Uh, oh, there are two more questions. All right. Uh, so if you want to fill those questions, the first one from Dr. Kalsom. Uh, if you can share some insights related to the community support and engagement towards COVID-19 vaccination. Oh. Uh... Insight related to the community support and engagement toward the COVID vaccination. Maybe I can't, I couldn't show you about the picture or some video about this, but I can say uh, how, <laughs> yeah, uh, how the vaccination in Indonesia. <laughs> Yeah, I have told you that Sumatra is the unique person, yeah, unique people with a, a various character. But in Sumatra, yeah, in Sumatra, how they are in sight and support about the vaccination because the, apa in Malay, paksaan, sedikit paksa. <laughs> Tapi bukan, bukan banyak, ya, sedikit paksa. Paksa, uh, I mean, uh, the people or the community needs to work, needs to go in their life belonging, needs, uh, needs, needs to earn their money to life with their family. So the economic, yeah, the economic status is uh, some the, the first variable or some uh, the first factor that some people in Indonesia or in Medan, Sumatra, they're getting vaccination because their needs and wants. Yeah, their needs, that is different from at the first they are scared, but because uh, the government giving the example like Jokowi at the first time going ex vaccination or maybe in Sumatra governor make the first time uh, vaccination. So that it's built the community trust, uh, that is vaccination is safe. So, and then there needs to work and the uh, rule and regulation that the people have to, the people have to show the pair, the letter of vaccination. That is, that is a two paksaan tadi, yeah, from because the letter. So, ah, mau tak mau kata Indonesia, ya, mau tak mau saya vaksin gitu. Because they need to work, they need to life. Yeah, there is some community support, but actually, because uh, in Sumatra always learn by their their partners yeah if the their partners is safe in vaccination so they are want to do vaccination too so it is a communication with uh, another partners or the neighbors or the the family it uh, will be built the the mindset of the the people uh, the people of community to vaccination in here yeah i think that is mrs kalsum thank you for your question all right, thank you, Dr. Ika. Uh, so we go to the last question for the, for the first part of the session um, from uh, Mama Ikwan. Uh, does Indonesia government provide financial support to community empowerment program? If yes, how much? And what are the mechanisms to supply the financial fund? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wow, 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 wow. Maybe uh, Mr. Muhammad will be a leader and government in here, yeah? <laughs> uh, uh, actually, I have uh, said to you, Indonesia government provide. Um, uh, in here, in one year of COVID uh, spreading today, maybe we can just count in here, in this, in this just one year, yeah? But, Mm, we always hope that the COVID-19 is finished in immediately. Yeah? And Indonesia government provide the financial support in here, support the to community. Mm, maybe not the, the, about the empowerment co program, yeah? because there is very complex, complex program. Uh, it's maybe in in one, we can say it is uh, just one prevention program, yeah. Not just empowerment. We can we cannot divide it just in about the company community empowerment, but but the program is uh, the name or the title is uh, 
it is about the prevention of COVID-19 infection. So some as part of the in prevention in here, maybe uh, including the community empowerment. So the financial in here, yeah, has provided by the government. Uh, about the <laughs> how much yeah <laughs> how much so i think it is secret yeah <laughs> but uh, not simply with another country we can see from the gnp on growth of income from a uh, country it is not same with malaysia with indonesia and i think i am not uh, i cannot say in amount because it is uh, very very sensitive here yeah, if i have talked this uh, we have to know that because there is a government uh, policy, yeah, of course. And what are the mechanisms to supply that is? Uh, that is uh, simple, yeah. Uh, in Indonesia or in our presentation before, I have told some promotion in the in the resident in resident inf environment. The people make some uh, we call name is Posco Peduli COVID nineteen. Yeah, that is Posco. That is one place. So in any environment has the postco. So anything about the COVID-19, but uh, like a cases or maybe just symptom or just OTG in Indonesian uh, ini. So uh, they will be informed, yeah, in be informed and com and that is will be compilated by gugus kendali COVID-19 in Sumatra. So there is uh, the person, uh, the power empowerment also about how to treat, how to testing, treat, and tracer about the COVID-19 cases. So the mechanism uh, to supply the financial funds is just uh, very simple because if we have funds in, this is the COVID-19 patient maybe. So it will be free in anything uh, service in health and they has, and they have free until from they are from hospital until they maybe die and going to the going to back to their god yeah and that is just free that is mean the government provide the financial support in here and about the mask sometimes and some health protocols and others yeah, so uh, the sumatra very curious and concerned about this prevention i think that's all miss mister thank you Okay, thank you, Dr. Ika, for, uh, I think uh, we'll stop taking questions because we still have another speaker. So thank you, Dr. Ika, for your excellent presentation and also for answering the queries uh, that we received from the members of the audience. Um, so maybe we can take a five-minute break before we proceed with the second presentation. Uh, just as a reminder, uh, I've posted again the, the link to the attendance form for today's event. So uh, for any of the participants who have not filled in the form, uh, kindly do so uh, during the five-minute break so that we can get your particulars and the number for this event. Okay, thank you very much. We'll, uh, we'll see you again in five minutes. Okay.
Okay, hi again. Uh, hopefully everybody has benefited from the short break in between the sessions. Um, now we'll continue with the second speaker, uh, building on, uh, on some of the effects that Dr. Ika has quoted uh, from the prolonged uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, healthcare workers are getting exhausted. The people are also getting tired and sick of having to uh, adhere to the uh, protocols and the SOPs uh, for COVID-19 prevention. And a lot of them are becoming, uh, are having pandemic fatigue and that uh, has an effect on their mental health status. So for the second presentation, um, <coughs> uh, it is a coincidence, I think, that our second presenter is an alumnus of Universitas Sumatra Utara. Okay. Uh, Dr. Jacinta is currently doing her doctor in public health. Uh, she graduated from uh, USU in 2012. Uh, after that, she completed her housemanship in Hospital Tungku Fauziah Perlis and subsequently served in Klinik Kesihatan Batu Kawa, Kuching and also Klinik Kesihatan Kuala Pilah in Negeri Sembilan before joining uh, our program here in UPM. Um, currently, she is in her second year of the RPH and doing her residency attachment in Pejabat Kesihatan Daerah Larut Matang and Dan Selama Perak. She'll be talking uh, on the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on mental health in Malaysia. So Jack, uh, whenever you're ready, you may start. The floor is yours. Hello and a very good evening to everyone. I'm Jacinta and I would like to share a little bit on the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on mental health in Malaysia. Before I carry on, I would like to introduce a little bit about myself. I attained my medical degree from Universitas Sumatra Utara in 2012. I completed my housemanship in Hospital Tuan Fauzia in Perlis and subsequently served in Klinik Kesihatan Batu Kawa, Kuching, and Klinik Kesihatan Kuala Pila, Negeri Sembilan, before joining the DRPH program in UPM. Currently, I'm in my second year of DRPH and doing my residency attachment in Pejabat Kesihatan Larut Matang dan Selama, Perak. This is the overview of my presentation. We start off by the inequalities in mental health until when to seek professional help, support, and consultation. We start, we start off with the inequalities in mental health. How a person responds to the crisis or disaster is influenced by individual background, the differences compared to others, and the community they live in. If we look at the image, let's just assume many of us are in this uh, blue speedboat over here, we have job security, government jobs. We have food on our table, a roof on our heads. But that's not the case with the other half of the population. And we assume they are in this tiny yellow sampan, just trying to stay afloat or perhaps already capsized or drowning. So these are the retrenched employees. Uh, they have mortgages to pay with no source of income, counting every penny they have to provide their child with a decent meal and to repair that leaking roof. So yes, we are all facing the same storm, which is COVID-19, but we all are in different boats each with different challenges and circumstances and hence the inequalities on mental health. The more difficult your circumstances, the more likely it is that you will experience mental health problems. Those who face the greatest disadvantages in life also face the greatest risk to their mental health. The definition of mental health itself is a state of well-being in which an individual realizes his or her own abilities. 
they can cope with the normal stresses of life, can work productively and is able to make a contribution to his or her community. Mental health includes our emotional, psychological and social well-being. It affects how we think, feel and act. It also helps to determine how we handle stress, relate to others and make choices. COVID distress might look differently to each one of us. There is a worry of possibility that our family members are infected, your opa, parents, little ones. There is fear of falling ill and dying and losing loved ones. There is also feeling helplessness, not able to protect loved ones. Once anyone is in the quarantine center, you feel helpless, you are not allowed to visit or do anything in person. The stress, anxiety, especially due to separation because of being quarantined. The fear of being placed under home surveillance because of the disease. And avoiding health facilities due to fear of becoming infected while in care. I have come across children who are not keen to send their elderly parents to be admitted as the rumours were if anyone who goes in never comes back alive. And there's also the feeling of helplessness, boredom, loneliness and depression due to being feeling isolated. I have also come across cases where once they return, from, return home from overseas, and requiring them to quarantine at the hotel. For example, in my case, a five-star hotel. Even with all the comfort, he still threatened to commit suicide if he was not let out of this room. So here are, for, here are some examples on how COVID distress might look like. How is it the situation in Malaysia? Malaysians' mental health are at a worrisome stage and more and more Malaysians are ending their life. This is also true among healthcare workers where it is noted there is a high level of depression, anxiety and burnout among frontliners. If you look at the trend over here, uh, the suicide rates increasing from 2019 all the way to 2021. And in the year 2021, uh, the number of suicide has increased more than half than the previous year. This value here is the rates up to May 2021. And may, the main causes of suicide in 2021 are family problems, finances and emotional pressure. Some of the methods used uh, in ending their lives are hanging, poisoning with pesticides, jumping off a tall building, or poisoning by car exhaust fumes. Sadly, looking at the statistics, there is at least two Malaysians taking away their own lives each day, meaning even today there's two which took their own life. And women are five times more at risk at ending their lives. And more than half involving youth of 15 to 18 years old, followed by those in their 19 to 40 year old. According to Kazana Research Institute's study, the Malaysian workforce, a changing landscape, nearly 30% of the employed women in Malaysia are sales and service workers. And this industry is among the worst hit by the pandemic now, seeing among the highest retrenchment rates and salary cuts according to other labor reports. Women are also at higher risk of suffering from domestic violence and sexual assault, crimes which has been seen rise in the, in the cases since the first movement control order was impl implemented in March 2000, last year. The impact of the pandemic on the workforce itself has seen that Malaysians are reported to have the 
highest level of anxiety compared to 28 other countries. The categories looked into were agitation of employment situation, agitation, the stress due to changes in work routines and pressure from the family. These studies were conducted among the public in Malaysia after the pandemic and MCO, which shows there is a significant increase in depression, anxiety and stress symptoms. So when does worry become a problem? A normal worry would actually help you get what you want and it solves problems in your life. It's excessive when it leaves you feel demoralized, demoralized, upset or exhausted. It gets in the way of living the life you wanted to lead. And if you look at the image here, just on a daily basis, we have a certain amount of stress in ourselves. So as the days goes on, this additional stress and it increases the level of stress. So what happens if we do not cope with the stress well? So there's avoidance of underlying concerns, prolonged distress, short-term gain, longer-term pain, and worsening of initial symptoms. Okay, so when there's excessive stress and you add on a little more to that, what happens? The bucket overflows. This is when you have your panic attacks, you try to hurt yourself or other people, you fall ill, you become restless or depressed. And how do you deal with it? So this is how exactly you deal with it. You make holes. Holes in this manner would be how the, strat the coping strategies you use to manage your stress to be to have a, to be in a manageable condition and how do you do that because each individual nature of coping is different one size doesn't fit all and we can't hand out a comprehensive coping manual and tell everyone to have at it so here are a few of the coping strategies you can consider. Generally, take care of your physical health, maintain social connections, take a break. A break could be a simple one like making a hot Milo and just looking at the rain. And you keep a routine, spend time outside if it's permissible and reach out for help when it's needed. <clears throat> other strategies include practice self and other compassion. <clears throat> you have to recognize and accept that vulnerability and suffering are inevitable and part of the human experience for all of us. Secondly, limit social media and news consumption. <sighs> well, stay informed but not to be flooded or overwhelmed. There's tons and tons of rumors and stories going around from every corner of the social media. So pick reliable sources and read. Stay informed, but not flooded with all the excessive information. And lastly, sustain social and relational connection. Social distancing involves physical distancing, but it's not a relational or emotional distancing. So you still connect with your loved ones with the social media, internet. So here are the few things you can control. These are within the circle over here. Your positive attitude, how I follow CDC recommendations, my own social distancing, my kindness and grace, limiting my social media, turning off the news when it's not needed, finding fun things to do at home. So you and me will focus on these things. 
matter. Anything outside this circle is something beyond your control. So it starts off from the amount of toilet paper at the store. How long will this last? How others react? Other people's motives? Predicting, predict, predicting what will happen? The action of others? If others follow the rules of social distancing. So according to the philosopher Lozu, if you are depressed, you are living in the past. If you are anxious, you are living in the future. And if you are at peace, you are living in the present. So here are some recommended mindfulness resources, the best meditation apps for this year. You can check out some of the apps and it's pretty uh, insightful and helpful. And here are the messages to the general public. Do not refer to people with diseases as COVID-19 cases, victims, COVID-19 families, or the disease. They are people who, who have COVID-19, people who are being treated for COVID-19, or people who are recovering from COVID-19. And after recovering from COVID-19, their lives will go on with their jobs, families, and loved ones. Secondly, minimize watching, reading, or listening to news that cause you to feel anxious or distressed. Seek information only from trusted sources and mainly in order to take practical steps to prepare you plans and protect yourself and loved ones. Seek information updates at specific times during the day, once or twice a day. Do not bombard yourself with all the unnecessary rumors. Also, check in by phone on neighbors or people in your community who may need some extra assistance. Working together as one community can help to create solidarity in addressing COVID-19 together. So messages to healthcare workers. For healthcare workers, Feeling under pressure is likely experience for you and many of your colleagues. It is quite normal to be feeling this way in this current situation. Stress and the feelings associated with it are by no means a reflection that you cannot do your job or that you are weak. This is a unique and unprecedented scenario for all of us. Even so, using strategies that have worked for you in the past to manage times of stress can benefit you now. You are most likely to know how to be stressed and you should, be, should not be hesitant in keeping yourself psychologically well. This is not a sprint, it's a marathon. Some healthcare workers may unfortunately experience avoidance by their family or community due to stigma or fear. This can make an already challenging situation far more difficult. And as far as possible, stay connected with your loved ones. Digital methods are one means of maintaining contact. Mm -hmm. Moving on, messages to older adults and their carers. Older adults, especially in isolation, and those with cognitive decline dementia may become anxious, angry, stressed, agitated, and withdrawn during outbreak or while in quarantine. It may also be helpful for information to be displayed in writing or pictures. Engage their family and other support networks in providing information and helping them to practice prevention measures like hand washing. Make sure that you have up to two weeks supply of all the regular medicines that you may require. Keep to regular routines and schedule as much as possible and help create new ones in, new in, in a new environment, including regular exercising, cleaning, daily chores, singing, painting, or any other activities. Messages to team leaders and managers. Be sure 
to keep in mind that the current situation will not go away overnight and that you should focus on longer term occupational capacity rather than repeated short term crisis responses partner inexperienced workers with more experienced colleagues the body system helps to provide support monitor stress and reinforce safety procedures ensure that outreach person personnel enter the community in pairs initiate encourage and monitor work breaks managers and team leaders are also facing similar stresses as their staff with potential additional pressures in the level of responsibility of their roles it is important that the above provisions and strategies are in place for both workers and managers and that managers can be a role model for self care strategies to mitigate stress and messages to people in isolation or quarantine i guess this message is for myself uh, recently some of my uh, colleagues in my pejabat kesihatan uh has been uh is positive of covid-19 and some of us are close contacts and have to be quarantined and swab was taken so i'm still waiting for my results and there are some i guess concerns as i'm pregnant at 36 weeks with my first child so yeah this message is for me as well So uh, I'm trying to keep as much as possible my personal and daily routines, and create new ones. Uh, so as for now, I bring a pre-recorded version of my CME, and for the others out there uh, who are in quarantine or isolation, do engage in healthy activities that you enjoy and find relaxing. And if you could exercise in your room, please do continue to exercise. and eat healthy food and <clears throat> do socially be connected via email social media video conferencing and telephone and use the it to connect with your loved ones and um <clears throat> messages for moving on to messages to parents uh, uh for as for positive parenting during Uh, the covid-19 pandemic uh, with your children so um, you reassure them stick to the facts and let them know that you will keep them safe and be them for be there for them you empower them uh, they have the opportunity to learn values of caring for others and thinking about the community maintain your own calm um well if a parent is calm the children tend to follow their attitude and engage them this is the time to spend quality time with your family members and i guess for some of you guys uh, this quality time has stretched from one year to two years um but let's make the best out of it um try to manage their emotions give them opportunity to ask questions discuss their feelings about the pandemic and how it affects them also be aware of um how much time they're spending on social media so filter and limit whatever <clears throat> is um uh, being uh, accessed uh, via internet and educate them uh, this could be the opportunity to educate them on good habits like hand washing and routines try to practice as much normally possibly can as much norm- normally as possible and these are some examples of play activities for children during quarantine and movement control order uh, online resources youtube channels and some free learning websites as um I don't have a child of my own right now uh, neither do I have any nieces or nephews so here are some activities done by my colleagues in UPM uh while they are um working in pejabat kesihatan and pursuing their studies at the same time 
uh so this is uh farah's house using the the kids are using the swimming pool so as uh the same as uh, torik's children and shera's children in their swimming pools uh this is farida having an outdoor uh picnic in their house uh same as same goes with um Fikri's children having an outdoor picnic um and this is an a uh, river bathing uh, session i assume uh near huzaifa's uh, house uh and these are uh, zas children uh they made their own cakes and decorated them and some batik painting and this pekas child who's making chapati so this is how they get their children involved in activities during pandemic and and you feel stressful uh think of this stop so you stop uh doing whatever it is you are doing just be in the moment take a breath or take deep three deep breaths and you observe everything around you uh, be mindful feel use all your senses touch here and then you proceed with your work so um uh, in terms of work life balance the key word is priority so you have to list down the things you need to do in a day in a week and you make compartments of it so you place them under different categories is it urgent or non urgent is it important or not important and you go on from there so those which are urgent and important you do it right away not urgent but important plan to do it as soon as possible and activities which are urgent but not important you delegate you outsource and those which are not urgent and not important just dump it all together or postpone it and moving on to a uh, malaysian government's response to covid-19 in terms of financial aid and hotline services which is provided uh i realize there's tons of uh, financial aid by the government itself from uh, electricity bill discounts to free internet to uh, to other aids uh, as seen here and some of the hotlines uh, provided uh, the hotline crisis preparedness and response center talian kasi 1599 talian hotline sokongan psychosocial women's aid organization lifeline association malaysia and next we have the other initiative by ngos uh, this is by mercy malaysia covid 19 pandemic fund and hotline they conduct a uh, vaccination outreach programs uh, in the aim of helping homeless individuals people with disabilities and anyone whose health problems prevent them from going to the vaccination centers uh, they also prepare psychological and social services support services to malaysians during this covid-19 pandemic as for 711 malaysia they started a campaign lend a helping hand 2021 uh, anyone can purchase general essentials like cleaning products instant noodles medication at 711 stores nationwide and leave them at their designated collection boxes so it will be distributed to beneficiaries closest to respective stores including government hospitals medical clinics other civil service frontliners charity homes for the elderly and children public universities and students dormitories um moving on to the ngos hubs emergency fund for ngos this is to support orphanages old folks home refugee shelters and other ngo who struggling financially due to the national lockdown yayasan food bank uh, redistributes surplus food from manufacturers wholesalers hypermarkets and hotel industry to b40 communities in higher learning institutions charity homes welfare centers and program perumahan rakyat miskin through its partners 
<coughs> refuge for refugees, supports the plight of refugees in Malaysia, including providing food and medical aid, education opportunities, as well as organizing fundraisers. The Lost Food Project uh, rescues uh, and gives it to those in need, including charity partners, B40 families, refugees, and vulnerable communities. <clears throat> the Kinshara Soup Kitchen uh, initiates numerous fundraisers to provide skill sets training for low-income individuals to gain independence on top of its usual soup kitchen and food bank operations. As for the Food Aid uh, Foundation, rescues they rescue surplus food and distributes it to charity or welfare homes throughout Malaysia. And in recent months, it has just they have distributed thousands of food bags to quarantine centers and vaccination centers to support frontliners that are serving the public during these trying times, while also distributing groceries and supplies to underserved communities. As for South Malaysia, uh, Ramadan with Shell, they aim to help small medical uh, medium enterprises sell their delicacies as sell shell stations. Uh, this campaign allows local and small-time food vendors uh, by providing them an avenue to market their Ramadan food goods during this difficult period. As for HP Malaysia and Tech for Malaysia, I move with HP campaign. Uh, schools in Klang Valley with high population of underprivileged students will be identified by Teach for Malaysia team. And families who are nominated, nominated will be receiving HP 14 laptops. Sunway malls are rent free during movement control order. The retailers uh, that are not providing essential services and supplies, uh, Sunway Mall has granted these retailers rent free during the MCO order period. So, this movement <coughs> is by the people for the people. Uh, Bendera Putih, uh, where the mechanism of the movement is simple. If you are in need of food and essentials, just raise a white flag outside your home to signal to others and ask for assistance. It can be a plea for help instead of taking drastic actions that may hurt you or your loved ones. And uh, this is actually um, activity done in my Pejabat Kesihatan for the healthcare workers to reduce uh, burnout among the staff. And next uh, is when to seek professional help, support and consultation. Uh, is when there's persistent sadness, anxiety, anger, hopelessness, worthlessness, loss of interest in pleasurable activities and of feelings of being overwhelmed, significant impairments of changes in functioning such as sleep, getting out of bed, appetite, concentration and or hygiene, increased impulse recklessness or risky behaviours or recurring thoughts of expressions about death, dying and or suicide. And lastly, don't be afraid to ask for help. All you have to do is ask. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Jack. Hope you are feeling much better. <laughs> uh, so I think the, the situation is very similar all around the world. People are getting tired the frontliners are getting exhausted and that could give rise to a lot of mental health problems uh, as illustrated by uh, Jack's presentation just now. So now I open the floor to any questions or any views that any of the members of the floor would like to ask Jack or to share with the rest of the participants.
or you can also type it out on the chat box if you have any questions. So. Okay, so I think everybody is very clear on what was presented. So I think uh, this is the time when we need to um, not only look up for ourselves, but also for the people around us, our family members, our community members, yeah? as, as emphasized by Dr. Ikas and also uh, Dr. Jacinta's presentations just now. Uh, we need to rely on the people around us, our family members, our friends, and also members of the community to help each other. Uh, because this has been going on for a very long time and we have no idea when we will be free of this. So uh, it is quite a long time to go. Okay, All right. Uh, okay, we have one question from Dr. Zaid with regards to social media use during COVID. As the MCO limits social interaction, people may, sh may shift to social media for their social needs. Then should we limit social media use as mentioned in your slide? Okay, so Jack, maybe you want to uh, address that question? Uh, okay. Um, so when should we limit the social media usage? Uh, so we can pick on which when the right situation to limit when the, the usage of social media itself. So um, when I mean limit the usage of social media here is uh, when it's uh, listening to the news, uh, the statistics and the rumors, the stories, that is the exact time for you to limit how much of news or rumors you want to listen to. So you pick a specific time, maybe a reliable source uh, from KKM or MKN, WHO or CDC. Those are the sites you want to uh, listen or hear from when it regards to statistics of COVID-19 and their progress of the cases. But you definitely should limit uh, all those rumors, those uh, circulating in you know, social medias, uh, in your WhatsApp, in your telegrams and all. Those are the things you should limit. Uh, the other things uh, you can carry on with, because you have to use social media for, for work purposes, uh, for maybe some entertainment and things like that, yes. But even so, for entertainment, you should limit. Like uh, what kind of entertainment, how, how many hours or how, many, uh, how, how long you want to spend watching uh, a TV program on, on, your, on your TV. So those are things you should limit. But other things you can use for, for knowledge purposes, for your assignments, for, for your work purposes. Those are the times you can use it as much as you want. Is that clear, uh, Zaid Azman? <laughs> okay, right. you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other questions from anybody else or you want to type it up on the chat box? All right, if there are no further questions, uh, I would like to thank both our presenters for today, Dr. Ika from USU and also Dr. Jacinta from UPM. Uh, it has been a very informative session, I think. Uh, it concerns all of us because all of us are going through this uh, pandemic and it affects us in many ways. So hopefully whatever was presented would be beneficial to everyone in facing this very long pandemic. Uh, also, thank you to our, uh, our counterparts in Universitas Sumatra Utara for joining and participating in our session today. And we look forward to future collaborations for uh, other programs, okay? Uh, with that, uh, take care everyone, stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you very much. And Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.